because we actually do have a seven o'clock one of these. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of concerned. So we're going to figure it out though. Oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Oglesby and Scott Show. My name is Charles Oglesby, um, also known as Todd Millionaire, Todd Billion, with Rashana Scott, who will be joining us momentarily. Uh, thank you guys for opportunity. Again, the purpose of this, sto uh, this show is to share the stories of successful African-American business owners and investors, because we believe the business and investing are the two keys to financial success and generational wealth. With us today, we have Miss Gabby Burks, or I see Gabby Burks, I see Gabby Williams. I'm assuming one of those is, yeah, so I'm going to call you Gabrielle. There we um, go. <laughs> she's an investor, realtor, project manager at St. Louis, Missouri Market. Uh, through education, consultations, and boot camp, she teaches the basics of real estate investing and demystifies all that is needed to be successful. She has a degree in corporate communications, and she excels in problem solving and getting to the goal, which is cash flow. Prior to real estate, she spent many years in banking and nonprofit, and as a wife and mother, she understands the need to create financial freedom and build a legacy. So welcome to the show, Gabby. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for reaching out. So the first question that we ask people is, um, well, I'm going to ask you this. Who are you outside of the intro that I just read? Um, who are you and where are you from? Yeah, so I was born in Chicago, Illinois, and I, I'm Gabby. I'm Geraldine's granddaughter. That's who I am. And uh, originally from Chicago, grew up in Carbondale, Illinois. Nice. Um, so you grew up in Chicago. What was uh, life like growing up? So I was in Chicago for probably the first 10 years of my life um, to be just totally transparent and keep it real like I like to do. Um, we were in and out of shelters pretty much my whole life. I didn't know that. I thought they were apartment buildings. So um, I didn't find out until maybe my teenage years that they were actually shelters. So we lived in very nice shelters uh, growing up, always had family around us. Um, in terms of like ownership and so forth, I had no idea what a, what the inside of a car looked like. We took public transportation. We took the CTA. Um, here we go. <laughs> uh, we, took, uh, we took. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Now, now your sound is out. Oh, I'll say, Rashawn, we started without you, so we're already in the middle of the first question. Donna, the voice. Make sure you get that. I don't know. Go ahead and go. I, I want to say yes, but I also don't want her to flash on here. And mm -hmm. She's like trying to unmute herself. Okay, you just tell me what when to go and then I got Okay. You, you were coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can wait for her or we can keep going. It's you tell me what to do. Um since she's here and the way Zoom is so weird, like People can talk over people on Zoom, so I kind of want to get her in yes. before we start going. Okay, perfect. I'll wait. But yeah, I've been thinking about St. Louis as a market because I'm trying to, like, Detroit's actually getting really expensive. Um, and so I'm trying to find more affordable deals. So I'm trying to find more $10,000 homes, $20,000 homes, something that, yeah. Yeah, lean on me. I, I definitely, I, we definitely find them. Hopefully we can get into it today on some of the strategies that we use to continue to win and, and how we, um, now are you a flipper or are you a buy and hold? You know, I started out buy and hold and then I decided that I don't want to wait on tenants anymore. So I'm doing my first flip right now. So oh, fair enough. Okay. We'll see. I'm, I'm proud of you. Congratulations on doing your first flip. I mean, you know, when tenants stop paying, you got to figure out how you're going to get paid somehow. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, Excellent. welcome to the show, Rashonda Scott. Hi. Why you? Why you gotta let everybody know I'm late? Oh. I mean, she kind of knew what time we <laughs> started and everything. I didn't. Talk I meant our. Li- I meant our listeners. Or did the podcast oh. not start yet? Oh no, we started. We started. Oh okay, and, we in the middle of an episode. And she, she was <laughs> dropping gems. She was dropping gems. So we're gonna get right back to it. I just I was waiting for you to get back in because I didn't want you to talk over her when she's dropping fire so i'm gonna cycle back we were talking about um what life was like growing up yes sir yes sir so um like i said i'm originally from chicago um grew up in chicago until i was about 10 and then we uh relocated to southern illinois carbondale um and so life growing up you know in chicago it was great we had all of our family there whole families from chicago dad side mom side um like i was telling you we grew up in um, shelters. I literally had no idea in full transparency we were in a shelter because they were super nice. They were high rise. There was a bailman there, but it was, my mom didn't tell me, maybe she did not tell me, but I didn't realize it until we sat down. And she's like, oh, that was a shelter. And I'm like, what about this address? And she's like, that's a shelter. I'm like, so our whole lives, right? So um, that was pretty much my childhood. So I had to go back and, and look at that and see, was this traumatic for me? And it really wasn't because like I said, it felt like um, an apartment, it felt like public housing and so forth. As far as ownership is concerned, my great grandfather um, owned a multifamily on the South side of Chicago. And so once we left the shelter, we would be in and out back and forth between, you know, what I know now as shelters to his multifamily on the South side. Uh, I did not know as a kid, three, four, five, six years old that he was a multimillionaire and owned that building. Uh, we were not paying rent and so forth. And so when he passed, we lost, uh, we pretty much lost everything to be, to, we gonna just keep it a thousand today, okay? We lost everything on the South side, everywhere, any, anything we own, we do not, we no longer own to this day, right? So, um, but life in general was, was really good growing up. Like I said, my high school years were in Carbondale finished uh college here in st louis and so yeah definitely definitely had some 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 looking back to do as far as you know housing is concerned um when did when did you start getting into real estate when did that shift happen for you that's a whole okay so so long story less long uh and and if you guys follow me and you you know really follow the journey then you know that uh, I'm very open about my my son had a, a brain trauma, so he passed away at birth in 2019, and I was working in nonprofit here in St. Louis. Always worked in nonprofit for a very long time, banking nonprofit, and so um, I was in the hospital bed with my son. We were there for months and months and months. Had occurred probably about a half a million dollars worth of medical bills, and the CEO of the company called me and said, "We no longer need your services." Right. So ultimately, she was stripping me from my medical services. I didn't have a job. I said, are you firing me? And it was, you know, first time I ever worked for a black person. First time working for a black woman. We just, like I said, we're going we gonna to tell the story. And she said, yes, we no longer need your services. I reminded her that I was in the hospital. I'm on maternity leave legally. And she said, oh, that's too bad. Right. And so I remember feeling like I have to do something because you know, when you heal from a brain trauma, it could be 15 years, if that, right? And so I knew my life would never be the same. And I kept trying to think, guys, like, what can I do to make money from home? What can I do to make money from home? So I enrolled in real estate, like school, and I felt like it wasn't like moving fast enough. And I, I was worried about building up clientele as a realtor. And so we had about 21 ish thousand dollars in the bank. I took out $10,000 and bought our first rental. Nice. Um, in between um, losing the job, buying the first rental, were you um, taking any courses, listening to any podcasts, reading any books? What did that process look like? Never. No, nope. never. Wow. Never. I never. I never listened to a podcast, read a book, anything. I was completely 100% desperate, and I knew I needed to have residual income, right? And so I said, well, if I can at least make, you know, at the time I'm renting, you know, the the where we're living. I said, if I can at least cover that, I can figure out everything else. And so I was looking for a rental that would pay my rent, you know, cause I knew I couldn't afford to move without, you know, a W2 income. Right. And so I found a rental to pay my rent and that's how I pay my rent. I never heard of any of the podcasts, read a book, took a course, nothing, just completely desperate. And so I jumped, I found when I decided to buy the property, I would say it couldn't have been more than 10 days. I bought the property. I was closing. Um, yeah. And I- how long ago was that? That was in 2019. That was uh, 
the spring. Gotcha. And so what was it that made you say real estate? Really the, the desperation. And I, I felt like, uh, you know, the CEO at the time was, she had all my power. I remember her, even though I was like so scared in the hospital and so forth. I mean, imagine being at your lowest and somebody, and you're like, I can't go no lower. I'm in the hospital with my son. They're telling me he's not going to make it. And somebody takes you lower. And I thought about that power, right? I'm like, that's a lot of power she has. I said, I never want to feel this way again. What can I do again? Back to that question to make sure that I can work for myself. And so I thought about that residual income. The only thing I could think of um, that was sure, I thought about stocks. I thought about, I, I've always been into stocks here and there, but for sure was, was to be a landlord and to get, uh, you know, tenant rent. That was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was it that first kind of sparked that, right? You, you knowing and that being a landlord and getting residual income through, you know, tenants, like what was it that first, you know, kind of sparked that for you saying like, okay, this is a real way to wealth. Uh, you know what? I really wasn't thinking about wealth at the time. It was, it was literally the desperation. And I, and I, you know, I lean heavily on, on God. It could have been like that, they dropped down. And then, you know, when you're trying to survive, right? So we, I was Ubering, I was door dashing, I was doing all of these things. And so I was up late, late at night, if I can give you more color to the answer. And I was like, there's gotta be something that I'm missing. And John, who is the president of my company now, my business partner, um, he has rentals and he has a YouTube show. And I was just scrolling on Facebook and I said, he does real estate. And I DM'd him 2019. I said, will you help me find a property? And it couldn't have been, cause it was probably like four o'clock in the morning. The very next morning, eight o'clock, we were walking properties. We walked maybe four or five. And the one I bought, he said, this is the one. And so I bought it. And so that desperation married with, I mean, the innovation and really God moving. And I was on, on, on Facebook and I saw somebody- And that Chicago me. hustle. Right, right. You know, I'm not, <laughs> not going to be down for too long. No, but so yeah, all of that married together. Um, no, I never took a course. The first real estate course that I was my own, I, you know, that I built out, didn't do any of those things. I, I, I tell people to do that, but um, you'd be surprised what desperation is going to create. You know what I mean? A new so $10,000 purchase price, any rehab? Um, what do the numbers look like on that deal? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I would say in total, we probably spent about seven to eight grand, maybe let's, let's say seven to nine, um, wasn't great at bookkeeping. There's a box that still has the address on it full of receipts. Cause one day I'm going to go back and get the real number. Uh, and we did a lot of the work ourselves. I ran the full rehab myself. I was on YouTube. I was Googling, I was calling, you know, John a lot. And um, I was calling the older woman, hey, can I get a free dumpster? Hey, do you know any kids that will come by, right? Like I literally was, was trying to think how I can win. I was at my property 80 hours a week for uh, a total of 70, 72 days and then placed the tenant through section eight. Yeah, I know that I was watching some of your videos and that's one of the strategies that you kind of tell people to implement is to do the work yourself mm -hmm. and save money that way. Um, especially on that first rental. Why is that important? Man, you know what? Because I figured that my target audience and who I talk to on my page and, and you know, a lot of the people that book with me um, is, is a single mom and she has $30,000 or, or 21,000, you know, just, just enough, you know, for my market um, to get her in the door, but not enough to finish it up and make it pretty. And so a lot of the I always say we, you could do more than what you think you can do. And so that piece is important because it's going to create buy-in within yourself um, and you're going to be able to know and learn. And so now I know how much and how long, uh, you know, painting a room cost. I know mm -hmm. you, can, you, can't, you can't game me, right? And so one right. time, for example, um, I want you to have that knowledge and I want you to have that buy-in. We, we were, were flipping a property in Berkeley, Missouri. And we got a bid back for some cabinets, some freaking cabinets painting. I'm like, oh, it's going to be like, you know, $300. This man told me $1,800 to paint white cabinets white. <laughs> now, watch this. If I didn't know that painting white cabinets white cost a bucket of paint and two hours of labor, right? I probably would have swiped my card and kept it moving. But because I had that buy-in and I did it myself, I got to look at everything and say, this don't cost that. It don't take that. Right. And so now I'm able to talk to my contractors like that. 
day in and day out. It don't take that long. It don't cost that much. Push back on that. You're fired and so forth because I was in it and um, really built a strong foundation. And I want that for people that are starting out so that because you will get robbed blind. And so in order to prevent that, what does it look like for you to GC yourself and be in the door yourself? I, I love that for um, for the people that listen to me, yeah. those single moms and so forth. That's that's why um, they always say like the first property is necessarily to get rich is to learn how to do real estate. And so like, even for me with doing my first flip, yeah, I want it to be a home run, but I also just want to learn. Um, learn how to do the whole flip process beginning to end sure. and then also one of the things that I kind of wish I would have done is done the work on some of the beginning properties because you learn that skill and like you said you don't get robbed in the event that you have to go to that tenant's house and knock out their repair yourself you can do it um, and so it just makes the whole real estate process a lot easier you're gonna learn how to put in floors learn how to do all those different things yep. so I think that's really smart and like you said we are more capable than, than, we think, than we think we are. Next. Um, where did your real estate journey go from there? What did, um, what did you do next? Yeah, so um, I started, I started uh, documenting everything. My uncle, uh, I asked my uncle for money. He's a, definitely a multimillionaire in North Carolina. He said, nope, not gonna give it to you. And so I'm so grateful because I would be splitting the, that door that we're talking about today, that first one nets me about a thousand dollars on a 10, 10 grand purchase. It's insane. Um, but I say all of that to say, I asked my uncle for some money. He said, absolutely not. So I did all of the work myself in that I started documenting the journey. Um, just like on Instagram, I'm, I had like girl, uh, 1100 followers, right? So I'm like talking to myself, my daughter's filming me, you know? And so, um, little by little traction started, uh, gain and people started saying if you can find a ten thousand dollar rental i didn't just find one ten thousand dollar rental remember i walked several ten thousand seven thousand eight thousand i mean it was i thought that was the norm right a girl who's never owned anything never lived in a home that her family owned you know her, her immediate family owned i didn't know that was rare and people were i mean my dms were blowing up if you can find me this if you can find me this if you can find me this i'll pay you and so i said let me finish real you know real estate school and so when i finished real estate school i started to build out ultimately a one-stop shop concierge, which is what we are today. You, you're going to tell me how much capital you have to bring to the table. We're going to coach you. We're going to take you into acquisition. We're going to close with you. We're going to rehab. We're going to flip with you, or we're going to tenant place. And so we do everything start to finish right here with me in St. Louis. And so I, it literally went for that from that one rental to building out a business on how to find cheap rentals or rentals, how to find cheap properties. So I got and my that's... license going to a brokerage and learned a whole lot and that's the company real estate bay um, you've done some crazy numbers can you um give the listeners some, some more information on the statistics that you've accomplished thus far yeah yeah um so you gotta ask my marketing guys so i i know as of now for for the first four months of the year uh, we bought five hundred thousand dollars worth of rentals in st louis the cheapest one being six thousand um, and the most expensive one being 53. So somewhere in between there, we, you know, we hit a half a million dollars. Um, flipping with people all over the country, uh, our flip profits range from 74,000. The lowest flipper with us is 54,000. And so, and we're talking about, I'm done with the flip in eight weeks. So the systems and the process is I won't even take a flip that's over nine, nine weeks. If you show me a door and I, I can't do that because it's too long. I like to move and move and move, get you your money, get you my money and go to the next one. Um, in total, we probably have about 468 today. I looked at it yesterday. Real Estate Bay, uh, like students all over the country and the world. Um, I'm really excited and proud at everything that they're doing. They, they've taken it and like blown them, you know, their own uh, portfolios up. But then you can either be a student or you can do a, be a full-time client. And so the full-time clients are the ones that have acquired the 500,000 here in St. Louis with us. And then um, in terms of just actually last week, we just onboarded, uh, gosh, I want to say another nine, 13 clients with a total, and we only take cash clients, $483,000 cash that we're about to deploy into the St. Louis market for acquisitions and rehabs. Wow. Wow. And so when you buy these homes cash with your, with your clients, are you then refinancing and putting debt on the property or are you just keeping all the cash in? 
I guess it probably depends on the circumstances too. Yep. It depends on the client. Yep. So we'll walk you through all of that. We have everything from, you know, me as the realtor all the way to the lender. And so um, it depends on how detailed we want to be with the client or how detailed they want us to be. I love when my clients use me up. And so to give you some color around, you know, do we refinance? Do we not? We have clients that say, Gabby, this is the house that I want to buy. What does it look like? And I, you, you in the hood, but we can make it pretty, right? And so I can add value to this house. That's cool, boo. But before we place a tenant, what does it look like for us to stage it and to call an appraiser out so that we can have an appraisal on the books with my lenders and she's going to tell you the value that's at hand. So we can get that you know, finite and that detailed or but we start with the goals. So, so that's, um, who am I talking about there? That's just Zeppi, right? So he's out of uh, California. He's like, I got to, I got to burn every deal. Every deal has to have equity in it. So let's build out a, a plan for you. Or I can have Janice right in Belleville who says, um, I don't care about none of that. I need to leave my job in three years. This is how much money I have. And she's in the middle of her first flip um, with us right now. And so she just needs, so she's flipping her this first house and then she's going to go into rentals. And we built her out a goal to hit $5,000 a month in rental income because that's her goal. His goal is something different. And so each client has totally different goals we got a you know a client out in miami she said i want to keep flipping until i hit a quarter of a million dollars so then we put her on a plan that's specific to her so it, it definitely depends on the client and we ask about your 20 you know your year goal and then your five-year goal and then we kind of work backwards from there all right so i got a couple, a couple of questions um my first question is um so what does your team look like sure so it's me as the CEO, John is the president of field, uh, uh, let's say acquisitions. Uh, we have Janae, who is the office manager. So that is it for Real Estate Bay as it stands. Um, we have a lawyer, an accountant, and that's, that's pretty much it. It's just okay. us three. And then my next question is, so you mentioned working with clients, right? And so um, when you're working with clients, you are representing them, right? You're their realtor. Um, and then you're also project managing the rehab. And then you're also partnering with them on whatever the project is. Or no? Like, are you just representing them? Or are you actually in business with them? You're in business with them, oh, right? So we don't. No, no, we're, we're oh. not. Well, we go to, I'm your GC. And so you okay. hired, I actually put a bid. Right, so you're getting a project management fee. So you're getting, oh. a, so you're representing them on the front end and you're getting the project management That's fee right. in the middle. And then you're getting, you know, a sales commission on the end to dispo it or if you rent it out or whatever the exit strategy might be, right? Yep, That's so, for, that starts the first quarter. Now, if you want to flip with me in 2021, my company takes 30% of all flip profits. So at that point, to your first concept, yes, we are a partner with any flips moving forward after last month. Right. Got it. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because the thing is, is that, you know, we talk often about like being a realtor and being licensed and things like that. But I feel like most realtors don't understand that there is more ways to make money than just um, you know, representing a buyer and buying a house, right? So in that particular example, like you got paid three ways, you know? So, you know, a lot of people may look at it as if like, oh, you're only making 6% or whatever it is as a realtor. But initially, like you're making 6% on the front end, you're making 30% on a flip profit. And then you're going to turn around and you're making another six on the back end to sell it. Now, essentially, and I say six because that's the standard number in Chicago. And then, of course, if you have a relationship with that client, you aren't going to charge like a full like commission, right? So instead of six and six, it may be like five and five or, you know, whatever the case. But regardless, you still ate three ways so I want people to four, four ways come on with the four come on with the four to five just to join real estate bank <laughs> just to join our company you pay is, is five figures to just to join me right because what we were seeing before was people wanted to play in my face I mean just dozens of people and so you could say oh yeah I want you to be my realtor but we needed a gatekeeper right and so put your money where your mouth is and we need proof of funds so you you pay me just even to get on the phone with me to join then you pay me at acquisition, then you pay me at GC, then you pay me to tenant place or to flip. So we eat the, the whole transaction. So we want you to go back into the funnel and do it again and again. And that's what we're seeing. Because why wouldn't they? Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. So what is the client responsible for outside of bringing the cash? You just take care of everything. It. Mm -hmm. I want you to bring the cash and I just want you to just sit back for just a couple months. Please mm -hmm. and God. listen to the expert. Please <laughs> listen to me. I want to, you know, and so that's it. That's really it. Um, um I, I don't. And so the thing, one of my passions cash, cash and trust. Cash. Oh, oh. Somebody asked us, we just onboarded a client. He has ninety thousand dollars. He said, Gabby, let me give ninety thousand dollars for ninety days. I need twenty seven thousand dollars back. What in St. Louis? I can buy two properties and flip and make you a hundred thousand. I mean, it's insane here. So, uh, that's, that's when you ask, can I keep the difference? <laughs> oh, that's, oh, we, trust me, my lawyer, she'll be, she'll be at the office on Wednesday. So we write up, you know, really specific and airtight con uh, contracts, but to your point, what do we want the client to bring 100% capital and to be quiet? But one of my passions is, uh, I don't want to build passive investors. I want people to be able to replicate this process in their home states and so forth. We have people that invest with us from Ohio. You could probably do this in Ohio, sis, right? But I want to see it done first. And so one of the commitments we make is you get unlimited text and email to me and the office manager Monday through Saturday, nine or excuse me, 10 to 5 p.m. So you get access to me constantly. All of our information lives on an online database. And so the client is able to log into their property, see pictures, see videos, see receipts. They see uh, Home Depot receipts, what was ordered, what was taken back, who's doing what. And so they, they live phase by phase the project. And then we check in with clients once every seven days at a set time for 30 minutes and say, your project is killing it, or you haven't paid an invoice in 10 days. And so we're probably going to mail you back your keys. What, do, what are we doing here, right? And so we do touch bases because again, that transparency is important so that I can live out what I really wanna do, which is to teach people how to do this um, for themselves. Yeah. What are you looking for in an ideal client? In terms of like amount of money, maybe credit score, experience, what are you looking for? Okay, because yeah. Charles got money. He wanna know what the application oh, yeah. process is like. Oh. <laughs> about the credit score. I, I really don't care about credit score at all. Because remember, we only take cash. Um, it's very rare. I, I won't take a client that's not cash. Um, I'm definitely an investor's agent. I really don't want to take home buyers. Ugh, sorry, I just don't. My passion is the investing side. Um, and so I want you to be an investor or interested in being an investor. At minimum to join real estate, baby, wanting to see proof of funds of $40,000 for my buy and holders, because I got to get you through the whole transaction. That's the joining fee and everything else. I can tie you up at 40 grand and you're done. If you want to flip with me, we need to see at minimum $70,000. That's pretty much it. We do ask, we do have two screenings and some of the questions can feel a lot like, you know, how is your home life? Do you trust your mom? And you, you'd be surprised, or how, do you, how do you feel about deploying capital and not seeing the, the project? And, um, you know, people will say, oh, I don't never need to see it. Or some people will say, I need to, I'm going to fly in four times. Baby, the the project only seven weeks. Why are you flying? What you doing? So that's a trust thing, right? And so we we literally sit down and say, does this client have the capacity? If she's saying she needs to fly in four times in seven weeks, she may not have the capacity for how we roll. When we send you an invoice, you we need thirty three percent of thirty thousand dollars today, <laughs> so we can start. We need thirty three percent of thirty thousand in two weeks, and thirty three percent of thirty thousand another two weeks. Like we we roll through it. Um, our longest rehab I think was was that seventy two days. So we, we, we go fast. So buckle awesome. up and, and be ready to pay the, your invoices. <laughs> it's impressive that you've been able to scale so fast. Yeah. Um, and I think what's cool is when you aren't limited to your own fi financial situation, you can do a lot more. Yes. And so now it's like you have the knowledge and you supply the knowledge to the resources. And so now you're just clicking. How many flips and how many flips do you have going on right now? At this very moment, we have we have oh, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. We have three flips and one rental right now, so we have four properties under rehab. And how are you managing all that at the same time? <laughs> um, you know, a lot Notion. We use Notion, uh, so each property has, like I said, its own database. Um. Each property has its own calendar, who's in and out and so forth. Each property is on an alarm system, um, its own lockbox. Each property has its own bank account. So when you deposit, I know that this is over here. So when my office manager pays, she paid Chris today, she knows the, 
he's at Lexington, Swipe Lexington, right? So each property literally is its own entity. When we meet, we meet on one prop. If we meet, you know, I like to be, I like to go, you know, your job, let's go. We meet on one property. Um, they all have their own database, own checking account, own LLCs. Each property has its own LLC. Everything is its each, each property has its own page in QuickBooks. And so everything is systemized and they're all totally separate. Um, I was watching your stuff and you made mention that people shouldn't be trying in the beginning to buy $100,000 properties. They should be trying to buy more affordable properties. Um, why and how do you do that properly? Yeah, specifically, I think I was talking about investments for your investment, uh, investments, six-figure investments. I mean, that blows my mind, maybe because I live here. So, um, why would you do that is because on your first one, again, I teach, I want people to do it themselves. It's less risk, right? If you can buy something for 20 grand versus $200,000. Um, so there's less risk. And um, I, that's pretty much it. That's the start and finish of that. It's, it's going to be less <laughs> risk, you know, in my opinion. Um, and so if you can't do it in your market, I this is this is how I build up a, fun, a, a wait list, you know, quarter after quarter is I beg of the to do it in St. Louis. I'm not going to ever drop the ball. We say this with full confidence. Maybe people call it arrogance. We'll never fail a door ever. We do too many processes. Even before we buy a door, we do an appraisal on it for the ARV, like an official 20 page appraisal from the bank. Like, hey, if I take this to you, will you refine? We do too much, pull too much data. We knock on doors, talk to neighbors. We do a lot. And so I say that to say, if you cannot do it in your market, then, you know, take off the, the you know, try something different, try a different market and, and try to build capital in, in a market like St. Louis and, and trust us to uh, bring you back the bag. Yeah, six figures is nuts, in my opinion, humbly. What are you doing to find deals in this market? <sighs> what don't I do? Um, man, we, we rely heavily on our wholesalers. So wholesalers mm -hmm. uh, talk, text, email, call, drop by the house directly so we got homies that you know literally I've been knowing since I was 10 I didn't know they was wholesalers until I found out I wasn't you know I was in real estate so wholesalers are a major part of our business we do a lot of short sales we do a lot of foreclosures and so my broker has been in business for 21 years and so when when she sat me down and said why you know why do you want to join this brokerage first I wanted to join it because they were really small and then when she told me all of the uh specialty she she is in I said this is the one for me so she works directly with foreclosures directly with the bank so I get pocket listings so I wouldn't say I do a whole lot because we buy a lot of her pocket listings directly from the bank um so we've built up a pipeline there she says hey this house is coming down in two weeks in two weeks I can figure out a phase breakdown I know how much roof is I got plenty of time to send guys by and build out a rehab plan so we rely heavily on our relationships um, on, both on market and off market. Question um, for that, like particular deal, for example, a deal that's coming down the pipeline from the bank, would you start to pre-market it or, you know, how would you, you just have the client lined up? Client, client is lined up. Yep. So like I said, we have 13 people right now ready to buy in real estate. Bank. That are waiting. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got yeah. Clients. Mm -hmm. And you're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the deal comes, you put them with the deal according to what their resources are. Bingo. Yeah, you're like a real estate matchmaker. That's exactly Real estate right. bay. That's it. Wow. Over I just do that. Real yeah. estate bay. Yep. <laughs> yep. I love it. Um, man, that's some good stuff. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a lot of notes. And um, this, is, this is definitely good stuff. So, um, are you working on your own deals right now or only clients? Oh, yes, I am. So me and John talked about this uh, maybe six months ago. We we um, we got overzealous and we just keep it real. Um, and we were giving away $6,000 deal, $13,000. Why? why? Why am I doing that? And I could have made more if I held it and flipped it myself and so forth. So um, as we go into the next quarter of or the next half of the year, John and I are going to be partnering on not real estate bay deals, but our deals and our own flips. Um, in terms of right now, my husband is GC. Pray for us. Mm. 
uh, one of our own flips right now on the north side of St. Louis, but then everything else is uh, already tenant place and everything. So that's the only thing that we have going on personally. John has seven doors um, and he bought them all cash, never used a bank. And so, but we realized that everybody's portfolios was growing and we were, you know, let's just keep it real. We're a new business. So we were like barely making it when it comes to after we pay everything, you know, it's like, where's the money, you know, where's the money going? And so I, of course I split everything with John and everything like that. So I say that to say, um, we're taking a step back in terms of when, when we get pocket listings, we're going to think through them first for ourselves until we make, we have a certain number we want to make. And then we're going to start sourcing them to 10 our clients. We're still going to give them plenty of deals. Totally. We know totally. $6,000 houses. Check. So, right. So that's the point, right? Like you cherry pick the best and wholesale the rest, right? <laughs> um, and then the other thought to that too is that like you mentioned, like you guys just getting overzealous. And I don't know, you know, if I would really put that much um I don't know if I would say that, like, because you can also look at it from a different perspective, right? Like the fact that there's so much abundance out there and the fact that you have, you know, so many clients, you have great clients and you're like, hey, you know, we're giving them great deals also, right? Um, but yeah, moving forward, yes. Oh, yeah. Cherry pick the best <laughs> and wholesale the rest, for sure. <laughs> have, you, have you looked at investing in any other markets or you just kind of, in love with St. Louis. Ooh, we don't tell nobody, but I really don't like St. Louis. I know that's going to throw y'all way off. And then we got to have a whole nother conversation. No, I'm not really a fan of St. Louis, to be quite honest with you. Um, well, you come to Chicago and spend six figures. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to be grateful. No, but um, so no, no, not in love with St. Louis whatsoever. I love what we're doing in St. Louis, but um, I, I would never invest in another market. I just, I see no reason. Um, it, I, there's absolutely no reason. It's just an abundance of, I saw 12,000. I mean, I see so many 12,000, 13, I just, yeah. I don't even, I just send my and, team out and they, they it's, it's no reason. Investing I mean, isn't about love. There we go. It's about it's numbers. About the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the numbers. <laughs> yeah. You gotta put that on a shirt. Um, That's real. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Um, what are your plans for real estate bay going forward? How do you plan to grow this company? And what do you plan to grow it into? Man, that's a good question. Um, grow it into. Um, so the, the biggest thing was the pivot on the on the flip. I was listening to BWR and I can uh, I cannot, the female real estate guru. Uh, it was the exact same story. She said I was doing all of these flips and I was taking home an, a commission. And one day I looked across the table and I saw my client was making six figures and he just put up the capital. So I said, moving forward, I'm going to split it. Like, who was, who was that? The female real estate. I know that story. From where? Black Wealth Renaissance. She's from Louisiana. They just interviewed her a few. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, yeah. So she said, um, I mean, instead of just being the realtor and representing them on the front and the back, I'm going to split everything with them. And she became a multimillionaire. I'm not going to say overnight, but very fast. And so that's the biggest thing, Todd, is, is that pivoting from a percentage, like I'm GCing the project, I'm not, I'm a partner in the project. And so we changed the website, you are now a capital partner. And this is what this means. You don't tell me pretty much anything. We get, we, you sign a contract saying real estate bank is the last say on design, Con what the refrigerator gonna look like. We do everything. And then you take home 70% of the profits. And so I think that that is going to, um, in fact, I know, uh, in, in three, 91 days, <laughs> we will be uh, easily sitting on a quarter of a million the way, the way we're thinking about how to spend this. And everybody, 95% of our clients that have come to us want to flip because they've seen a lot of the successes. And so uh -huh. um, imagine 30% of, you know, six flips that are six figures. And so um, that's really the biggest thing. And the other thing is getting us an office space, <laughs> uh, you know, having our own space and, um, and just expanding the team. My office manager is now getting her realtor license. Uh, There's plenty to go around. John is getting his realtor license. And so really positioning ourselves as experts. And then the other thing that we started and then COVID is we do black real estate mixers. And so we sell out a hundred black real estate investors all over St. Louis, come, really they be from everywhere, come in, drive in, and we you know have a happy hour and we talk, we have panelists, we have the Airbnb, that's not my space, but you talk about that. 
and we talk for four or five hours with a hundred black millennials in a room. And so all of that, you know, positioning myself, the branding is really, really, really good. What's going to be important to me moving forward uh, for the rest of the year. Um, what was your most successful deal? Um, I feel like I'm in it right now. Can I, can I, can I say what it's going to be? <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's going to be this. I know this That's for fun. a fact. So let's, uh, let's talk about the foreclosure, um, on, I ain't gonna say a street, but people crazy. The foreclosure, um, big white house. You bought that for, um, $53,000. It is uh, currently a three bedroom, two bath. We're making it three bedroom, excuse me, a four bedroom, two bath. We're expanding the livable square footage. So we're finishing the entire basement. Um, we're adding some features. I mean, we're, this mug is about to be sick. So the design is gonna be all like gold and metals. Um, and so we bought it for 53. We're gonna put it on the market for well over $150,000 into the 160s. And so the client, uh, and he's putting in, not, it, it, it was a great house. He's not putting in that much. He's going to walk away with quite a bit of quite a bit of money. That was probably my most successful deal. My my favorite deal is probably going to be my client Wendy, lover to death, out in Cali. Uh, she bought a rental with me. She got off the phone with me, very agreeable, trusting. She said, "Gabby, whatever you say." This was during orientation. She got off the phone with me. John called and said, "I found a house." I said, "Let me see it." I called her back. I had clients already. I called her back. I said, "I found your house," and she bought the house within a few days. And so we bought the house, tenant placed. We did her section, everything um, within five weeks. And so she's now cash flowing, I think, $900. Uh, and when she came to me, again, we go say, Wendy, what do you need from Real Estate Bay? She said, I just need a rental that will cover my daughters and my uh, student loan payment. I said, what's the payment? And she said, $700. I said, give me a couple weeks, right? And so that, I, I just love that for her because that's exactly what she needed. And now we're talking about refinancing with, uh, you know, Midwest Banking Center, one of our partners. Yeah. What keeps it. you going? <laughs> Not being rich, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, I'm super, <laughs> y'all, I'm super competitive. I'm, I'm very, very- Look, that'll do it. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, super, super competitive. Um, I, I compete with myself. You know, did you do the best on that deal? Uh, were you the best in that space, right? And so- um, my competitive nature, and I'm, I'm really not competing with anybody. I personally, for what we do, I'm sure somebody's gonna say, I do that. I've been doing that for 20 years. I don't see who's doing exactly what we do um, in the way that we're doing it and being totally transparent uh, with numbers and everything. So being competitive and, and, yeah. and, and you know what, like I, I didn't say this, but the $21,000 in the very beginning of the story with that, I pulled out the 10,000 and bought the the property on that was my husband's uh 20 i mean it's ours but we were engaged at the time so i pulled out ten thousand dollars from his business and i never paid him back so things like that you know i mean i can do it now but i just like let me get you know really settled then i got you back right so things like that i owe him 10 grand that, that that's what's motivating me <laughs> <laughs> i um how much of just seeing successful business people in your family pushes you to be i guess aim for generational wealth Man, you know, like I said, my great grandfather, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know he was rich. So I couldn't really uh, lean on him. My uncle, who is a multimillionaire, um, you know what? He motivates me in a different, in a twisted way because, uh, it, so we'll use the word like a father. So imagine your father who, who's never taught you any, anything regarding wealth. Um, and so that frustrates me a great deal. And so that motivates me, the frustration motivates me because why how did you become a multimillionaire? he's like you know i just work my butt off that's how he'll answer you right and you could be asking him with with in full like i need this information and he does not share it and so i see wealthy people a wealthy person in my family um really holding the keys and uh, much like my grandfather if we don't pass that information along we will be exactly where we were you know the day he passes with with really nothing because we don't have the tools to maintain it and so uh that that one wealthy person in my family motivates me to share. Um, my mom is 54 years old, has never owned a car. And um, as soon as I got my realtor's license, I cannot make this up. She bought, I walked her through, it was the hardest deal of my life. 
she now lives in her own property. And so things like that, that's motivation. Like, I know my uncle could have helped, like he owns a property, right? But being able to be a lifeline for family um, in, yeah. in, in transactions and spaces is hella motivating. For sure. um, before we let you go, I think there's a story that I saw in your story that I saw in somebody else's story. And you were talking about how your grandfather left um, a half million dollars to your family and yet and still your grandfather your great grandfather left the money your great your grandfather ended up dying i guess in poverty yep. and um what is the message that you wanted people to get from that that story man <clears throat> it's um yeah my grandmother is one of my tenants now so it life is serendipitous but um she obviously she's a widow but i, I think it's what i just said it's it's if we don't share teach and preach and beat the drum on, uh, I don't care if it's real estate investing, stocks, vending machine, I don't care what it is, but how to acquire and maintain wealth, right? Like our Jewish counterparts or our white, we, and, and let's talk about my, my last name, right? The Claters will be in the exact same place. We'll be back to being bankrupt, back to the city of Chicago, taking our properties or the city of St. Louis, right? If I'm not teaching that information. So I think that in one in one regard, people, you know, it's clickbait because my header, right? And so we got a lot of clicks. But so yeah, he left us. He actually, my when I told the story and it went viral, my mother called me and she said, because she saw it on the Breakfast Club, she's like, he left us a million dollars. She corrected me. It was too late. It was already viral. So he actually left us a million dollars. And so we celebrate that in one space. But man, man, did we win or did we fail? And I wanted to kind of show like and make it very polarizing that you can do Todd, you could become a multimillionaire, but if the baby don't know how to run QuickBooks and the baby don't know, it's all for nothing because we work not for our generation, but for two and three generations. And so that's ultimately what I wanted people to take from, you know, just being real about my family. That's so true. I was thinking, I was gonna tweet this, but I was like, you know what? I can leave my son nothing, but everything I'm gonna teach him is gonna allow him to build it for himself. And it's like, that's really the generational wealth. That's There's bad. that generational knowledge that gets passed down. So thank you for taking your time out to drop gems and share your story, um, especially how you built the business, Real Estate Bay, and just been crushing it in St. Louis and how you got a new client and me. I'm going to be hitting that link because okay, cool. I need to I need to make a deal happen. Um, where can people find you? Where can they follow you? And where can they find out more about what you have going on? Yeah, so the website is therealestatebay.com. Um, Instagram is real estate underscore gaps. Um, I, I don't know what Twitter is. I, I, I'd be liking to talk about people over there. So just follow me, <laughs> y'all. Um, and I'm really not too active on Facebook in regards to real estate. So definitely hit me on Instagram, follow the journey. We, we mark and show, in fact, when you join Real Estate Bay, you sign a document that says your property is going to be online. We're going to tell everybody what's going on. So you sign a, a, a confidential agreement that says there's no confidentiality outside of, you know, respecting who you are as a person. We show um, every single thing from acquisition all the way to the tenant getting the keys. And so follow me over there. You're going to be mad inspired. I do lives typically every single week. And um, I do a lot of free classes as well. So Instagram and then hit me on the website, therealestatebay.com. If you had to leave the people with one last gem, what would it be? Oh, man. Get started. Man, it's time out for... Can I just say it's time out for studying? Y'all, I'm sorry, but... Ooh, people, I got to study a couple more years. Years? What's going on? No, let's start, right? Like, let's start. Give yourself a deadline and go crazy until you get to that deadline. Crush it. Start, start, start. That's that's definitely what I would believe. So, so okay. this has been another episode of the Ogilvy and Scott Show with my name, or with myself and my co-host, Mr. Shana Scott, the Realtor of the Year. Um, hey. If you guys have any, if make sure you leave us a rating review. We like five star reviews. That's how you move up in the rankings. You see all these people move up, move up in the rankings because they get ratings, reviews, and they also get subscribers. So subscribe as well. If you're tapped in, subscribe. That matters. Um, we will be dropping the Patreon soon, so we'll get that out there with some more gems for the good peeps. Uh, but with that, Absolutely. it's been another great episode. My name is Charles Oglesby. We got Rashana Scott. And we're signing off. Cool. Thank you very much. Guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. We um got another uh
podcast we gotta hop on. Oh, that jumps so. out. Well, you guys have a good night. Thank you for hanging out. All right. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.